This podcast interview is with martial artist and doctor Michael Evangel. Guys, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and hit the alert button so you get updates. And also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This podcast episode is brought to you by Defense Soap. Defend what you have built. Save 15% with the code Mark the Shark MMA Show, used by all jiu-jitsu and MMA athletes to prevent skin infections. This podcast is also brought to you by Audible. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash MMA show and you get a free audiobook when you sign up for a 30-day trial. This podcast episode is also brought to you by Retorto Family Books. If you're interested in great books for your children to read, get books by Christina Retorto. And if you're interested in action, thriller, suspense books, you can get The Cabal, The Saga Begins, or fantasy books like Marcus the Vampire, both written by your host, Mark the Shark Retorto. Again, go to www.retortofamilybooks.com. Also, do not forget to go to the Mark the Shark and Mimi Show podcast website, the shop for our merchandise. We got t-shirts, hoodies, tank tops, hats, and even mugs. Anything you can want with the Mark the Shark and Mimi Show podcast name on it. And also, please do not forget to go to our website, where you can make a donation to support the podcast. All you have to do is click on a donation button. All right, guys, we're back on the show. And today I got a very special guest. I have a person who's not only a martial artist, but he's also a doctor. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Michael Evangel. How are you doing today, Michael? Good, Mark. It's good to be here with you. We had some technical difficulties, but we've got it all straightened out now. Yeah, it took us a while to get going here, but we finally got it going. And it's, uh, you know, that's how thing is, right? Like the technology. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> yes, for sure. And that's working now. I have, to give you a short story, I have a friend of mine. I'm not going to say his name because um, he, he helps me out with the podcast. Everyone has no problems. What, you know, Zoom, or I have an anchor app that you can use on your mobile phone to call in. Him never works. So when I have to do the podcast with him, I actually have to call his house number and use my cell phone to record, record our wow. conversation. It's, it's hysterical. Only him. But this is like the second year. I guess you would be up there too. Okay, well, he's... <laughs> We, we, we MacGyvered it. We got it uh, going now. Yeah. All right. So, Michael, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, martial arts background? Well, I started off as a teenager. I um, had a bad experience. Uh, when I was 18 years old, I went up to a, um, and the drinking age in New York State was 18 back then. I had a little bit too much to drink, and this bouncer named Tiny uh, put a beating on me. So I didn't like that too much. So I started studying martial arts. And when I was a yellow belt, I went up looking for him. Lucky for me, Tiny was off that night. <laughs> I was six foot nine. That's why they called him Tiny. Oh, wow. So that was kind of like my, uh, besides seeing Bruce Lee movies in the 70s, it got me interested in studying martial arts. And then I realized a little while into it that you should not look for conflict situations. You should try to avoid them. Yep. One of my favorite expressions is you'll never lose a fight you're not in. Because no matter how, how good you are, how good you think you are, somebody else could get lucky or you can make a mistake or a combination thereof and you could go down. It yep. reminds me of the Michael Moore, not the filmmaker Michael Moore, but the heavyweight and George Foreman. Yeah. Yep. I'm sure if you remember that fight, he was beating the tar out of George Foreman, you know, for the entire fight. At the end of the fight, George knocked him out. Yeah. And he yep. said to Michael, after he was the fight, old when he did that too. He was old. He was real old. He gave him the oldest heavyweight to win. And he said, "You know what happened?" He said, "I didn't think he could knock me knock me out." And that's a prime example of never underestimate anybody because any given day anything can happen. Yeah. So that's what I've been living ever since. But lucky for me, 
tiny was off or else I won't maybe be here today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now you, you, you have uh, black belts in multiple disciplines, right? Yes. I have a third degree black belt in Hakuru Jiu Jitsu and a seventh degree in Taekwondo. Oh, and I wow. Studied, I studied uh, Hakuru with uh, Mike Di Pasquale, I'm not sure if you know him. Yeah, yeah, he's just not, he's like not far from me. From my, yeah. From my house, yeah. But you're not he far got a lot of me. movies, like he was into like, he was like in a lot of the karate illustrating, kung fu illustrated right. magazines back in right. the day. He'd so when we were teenagers, um, really, I started going up to his dojo and working with his dad too, and he's in Rivervale, yep. Jersey, and his dad was a great man, he passed away, he actually made the first American martial arts movie ever called Chop Chop with Paramount. And it was a documentary. And his yeah. dad ran the martial arts exhibit at the 1964 World's Fair on the uh, recommendation and invitation of the Japanese government. And he's really a pioneer of American Jiu Jitsu. So I was lucky to study with one of, you know, some of the best people in the world in Jiu Jitsu. And then I was teaching Mike Taekwondo and we worked at a place, I'm not sure if you're kind of younger than me though, I'm 65. I do a lot of longevity work too with my martial arts, I might martial arts with my chiropractic practice, studying how to live long and prosper, but I think Star Trek might have a trademark on that one. But, uh, Spock. Yeah, right. You're right, you can do that. <laughs> yeah, live long and prosper. But uh, we used to work at this bar called the Bicycle Club in Englewood yeah. Cliffs, New Jersey, for years. And that's really where I developed a lot of the psychology confrontation because I've worked with a lot of federal agencies and, you know, not only through teaching the martial arts, uh, but also how to avoid situations and took bits and pieces, kind of like Bruce Lee, you know, whatever works. Yep. Take things from, even from Scientology, and I had a bad experience in 1986, the Scientologists tried to recruit me. But uh, that's a whole other story for another day. But uh, one thing I learned from them is, and L. Ron Hubbard was really a genius in certain things with business management. He came up with something called the ARC triangle. Have you ever heard of that, Mark? Oh, no, no. Okay, A stands for affinity. To find okay. that you like somebody, you want to occupy the same place at the same time as somebody, you have an affinity. R is reality, which is defined as agreement. And okay. C is communication, taking a bit of information, having it understood as it was intended. Now they form a triangle, and every time one point goes up, for example, we like each other, we have better communication. Anytime a point goes down, uh, you know, we have bad communication, then, you know, we don't want to be occupying the same place at the same time with each other. Uh, so okay. when I work with police, I work with them a lot on that and trying to build a rapport. For example, you come to a domestic dispute and this guy just beat the tar out of his wife. And you say to him, Mr. Smith, you know, what's the matter with you? Are you a man or a mouse? You know, you beat on a woman. No, you don't want to go there because that's adversarial. Mm -hmm. That does not build up the ARC triangle, right away you're knocking it down. So you say to him, Mr. Smith, obviously your wife must get you so upset to feel the need to hit her. Explain to me, what did she do? She didn't have my food on the table in time. <laughs> so the response to that is not, are you crazy? You hit a woman for that? Is like, I say, I hear you. That's my response. What I say is I hear you, and all of a sudden this guy says, hey, he hears where I'm coming from. He starts to like me a little more. So all little things like that. And this works with parents and kids. It works with men and women. It works with coworkers and it works in conflict situations. Try to build the ARC triangle. And then I work, well, I've got very lucky and I really believe, I'm not sure what your belief system is, but this friend of mine, Dr. Ted Corrin, he, I just went to a seminar, I taught down in Philadelphia this past weekend and he is, uh, Jewish, he said, in Hebrew, there's no word for coincidence because everything's ordained by God. He told me a number of years ago. Oh, okay. so it kind of takes the, um, like, you know, the idea of free will away because if everything's ordained already, then how can you kind of be responsible for what you do because it's already ordained, but we won't go there. But anyway, uh, I kind of feel that in many ways, everything I've done up to this point has prepared me for what I'm doing in the future. And everything I study, for example, when I went to chiropractic school, I had a master's degree in environmental health before that. And I said, I'll never use that. Now I'm using it all the time. I do a lot of work with tox toxins and longevity. And, um, you know, I've got a 
TV show now too, which is going to be premiering on Roku. Yeah, yeah, I was going to bring up. that up. Yeah, that's going to be coming up. Hopefully, yeah, later. I saw that. It's called. Uh, now, my agent came up with this. I didn't come up with it. It's called the Super Mike Show. Yeah. For instance, Superman was my favorite cartoon character growing up. American's Holistic Hero. That's what it's called. Okay. Uh, the Super Mike Show, America's Holistic Hero. So we're going to have an American Holistic Hero Club. And to join, you have to promise three things. One, to take what you learn and share it with others. You know, kind of pay it forward. Two, to try to be kind to our planet because we only have one. And three, we'll try to protect the animals that, because I'm a big animal advocate too, that occupy the planet with us. Yep. It's kind of a good, feel good type thing. And um, so we have, I, the first season's all done, 11 episodes. Our heaviest martial arts episode, you know, Tom Petiri, do you know him? State of the Art Security, he runs, he, he worked with me a lot of federal agencies. He uh, developed CDT. Okay. Uh, worked with a lot of cops. He works with a lot of cops. And so he teaches a uh, SEAL team. He works with, uh, you know, he does work with the CIA. But if I tell you that, I have to kill you, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. Uh, but he um, was on that because he was one of the world's foremost authorities in active shooter situations. And we did a show on active shooter environments. God forbid you're ever in a situation, what to do. So the, basically the show is your survival guide to life through health, fitness, longevity, the environment, nutrition, personal safety. Okay. Why do you need a survival guide? I'm glad he asked, Mark. Why do you need a survival guide? Because <laughs> there's so much, so much misinformation out there. For example, eggs are good for you, eggs are bad for you. You know, a high fat diet, a low fat diet. You have experts on both sides of the fence saying the exact opposite thing. So how do you know who to believe? How do you know what to believe? So we want to cut through the misinformation every week. And the, well, it's not really every week because they release the whole season at once. So we cut through the misinformation every episode and to deliver the truth to you. And then with that truth, you can share it with others. And then you'll become their holistic hero. So that's basically you know, the idea okay. behind the show. So on the Roku channel, there's not like a set day where you come well, in. Just well, no, it's, all it's, the episodes well, it's not that Roku. Watch. You have to have Roku, first of all, yeah. you know, that service, but then you have to download the streaming health TV channel. It's a free download on it. Yep. And then there'll be uh, about eight different shows that'll be on the streaming health TV channel. And my show is going to be the anchor show on that. And also oh, be Com okay. Comcast on demand. It'll be on two. Okay. A few different things, platforms. What, what is the other platform? Comcast on demand. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. I gotta so we'll be, talk later because I want to. I want to see how I get my channel on the Roku because I. Kinda, we'll, we'll talk about that too. We're gonna talk about that later. Uh, and so um, you know, we got the show, but everything with the show, like I said, everything up to my this point in my life, I feel has prepared me for this, and I've got pretty lofty goals because I always feel that if it's possible, anybody can do it if they put their mind to it. Because you know, Bill Parisi, you know, Parisi. Speed schools or any of those in the area? Have you heard of him? He was on. He did. He did a, a episode on fascia training because fascia. When I was in chiropractic. Oh, school, okay, okay. There's okay. all the stuff that holds things together. You have subcutaneous tissue that's fascia. You have deep fascia holds your organs. I'm sorry. You hold your muscles together with your bones and your nerves and your tendons. Then you have your visceral fascia hold your organs together. But fascia. It's stronger than steel, conducts electricity faster than the nervous system, and it is, um, you know, more resilient than nylon as far as flexibility. And um, it never got its due, just like gut bacteria never got its due. And now, if you read a lot about, you know, health, a lot of people are saying, you know, health starts in the gut because we have, we have, uh, we should have about 2,500 different species of microbes in us and on us. And we have about two to five pounds of bacteria, depending upon who you believe, in us and on us. You can't go around and count every one of them. But there's about a hundred trillion bacteria. We have about 10 to 40 trillion cells in the body, depending upon whose estimates you look at. Okay. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot more bacteria, cells and viruses 
And we even have protozoan and fungus, and they all have to have a purpose. We don't know what yet. But, you know, it's a learning process. And, you know, they say the entire knowledge of humanity is doubling faster than once a year now. It just takes 600 years to double knowledge. But it's so specified that a lot of times we don't realize it. Now, our generation will definitely see more major technological changes than any other generation ever did, ever will. But my grandfather, his generation, I interviewed him actually with a, I got a video camera in 1989. That was a big box and a cord, it looked like the NBC boxes. And I videotaped him and his generation, he saw more lifestyle changes than any other generation. You know, like the airplane, running water, you know, telephones. Yeah cable TV, microwave ovens, electric garage door openers. But as far as technology goes, I mean, it's advancing so fast. A lot of people that are older, they can't keep up with it. They just kind of like, don't even go there. I just got my first iPhone about a year ago because I was holding off because of the radiation because we did an episode also on EMF, you know, the detrimental effects of radiation on people. But let's talk a little bit about martial arts. We're talking about everything else. Yeah. But, you know, it's all important because the martial artist needs to look at things from a military perspective. Yep. You know, everything around them, things are trying to like do harm to us. So what we have to do is we have to try to eliminate and take away the things that are doing harm. And we have to increase the things that we're deficient in. So really, yeah. the only reason why we don't reach our maximum health potential are excesses and deficiencies. Yep. If you say, well, I'm missing a gene, well, that's called market genetic deficiency. <laughs> but sometimes there's not that much you can do about genetic deficiencies. But uh, Dr. Joel Wallach wrote a couple books. Uh, one's called Dead Doctors Don't Lie, which is, is a bestseller. Another one's called Epigenetics. I actually had dinner with him two years ago in New York. And he uh, is a, a naturopath, and he's also a doctor of veterinary medicine. So you can treat the animals and the people. But this book, Epigenetics, means we're not a slave to our DNA. Everything we do, everything we don't do, turns on and turns off good genes and bad genes. So we're not a slave to our DNA. And there's a lot of controversy around Angelina Jolie had a genetic predisposition to getting cancer, and she decided to be proactive and you know have certain body parts removed. Now... Now, yeah, some yeah. people say that's very brave. Other people say it's very cowardly. You know, there's two sides, just like there's controversies with everything. You know, uh, but just a side note, in 1996, the World Health Organization said coffee potentially causes cancer. In 2016, the same organization said coffee prevents cancer. Yeah. Because they were looking at the wrong variable. It's the temperature of the coffee that can cause cancer. Drinking very hot coffee, burning your esophagus. It wasn't the coffee. So a lot of times people look at things and they don't know what the truth is. Just like now, the American Heart Association still says low-fat diet. But the science says the food pyramid's upside down. The most calories should be fats. The middle is protein and least carb least carbohydrates because carbs burn dirty produce oxidative stress, free radicals, and premature aging. So as an athlete, a martial artist, I believe you should convert to more of a uh, fat burning or more of a ketogenic type diet. Which is kind of like paleo was the big thing a few years ago, and now keto is the big thing now. Yep. But common sense is always the big thing. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. people, you know, like the... Atkins died, people all high protein, and people ended up because he went to extreme ketosis and they ended up getting kid kidney failure. I knew somebody that had get dialysis because he was on the Atkins diet too oh, severely. Wow. Yeah. So we have to watch out. Even drink too much water can kill you because it can really? dilute your electrolytes. There was a guy that pledged for fraternity years ago. Part of the pledge, you had to drink a five gallon, you know, one of those Poland Spring big bottles. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not getting any money from Paul Spring to <laughs> give him a plug on here, but send me some money if you want, though. I'll take it. But he died from an electrolyte imbalance because he wow. lost his electrolytes. Wow. So, you know, as martial artists, we have to think of our diet, our sleep. Sleep is vital because you have to get good sleep. 
Actually, this is an advertisement. You can see my uh, wristbands. Uh, FIR, that's one of my corporations. I'm co-owner of a corporation. Actually, my business partner, he's the major owner, but it's called FIR Industries, and we infuse our products with tourmaline. And tourmaline is a semi-precious stone. In my opinion, it accelerates the healing process of the human body. So we have a lot of uh, martial artists, a lot of athletes that are using tourmaline for recovery. So recovery is also a very important thing. And do you think mixed uh, martial artists can do that? Like, what, what can this martial artist do? Absolutely. Well, head trauma is number one. We have to be careful because yeah. I had to show on concussions too. Because the way we look at concussions now is much different than we did years ago. I got so many concussions. I'm lucky that uh, I'm not. I don't have chronic traumatic encephalopathy right now. CTE that the football players get and boxers yeah. get. But we did another show on DNA testing. Uh, actually, Rafael Loretta was on. I give Rafael a plug. It's called Athletic Genetics, but genetics with an X at the end. And he did my testing. He said basically I was genetically built to beat the crap out of people. That's what he told me. Because of my fast twitch muscle fiber. And also, uh, you know, we used to do those slapping games as a kid. I never lost doing that. And so I got the fast twitch. and uh, my Injury recovery is off the charts too. And my ability to metabolize carbohydrates is something very interesting that I never knew until we did that test. I didn't know that there was a gene to actually metabolize vitamin D. And it's very important to keep our vitamin D levels up to get your vitamin D tested with all athletes. There was a study that was done about five years ago at the NFL Combine. And they found that the athletes with the lowest D had the highest injuries in college. The ones with the highest D had the lowest injuries because to recover and to prevent injuries, get your vitamin D up, you say over 30 uh, nanograms per, uh, I think, uh, I forgot the unit, uh, milliliter, I think it's per milliliter, but the units are 30 to 100, the range. They say, I like to see about 90. I think 30 is pretty bad. The lowest patient I ever tested had a nine. But athletes should get their vitamin D up. And vitamin K2 is very essential to have with vitamin D because K2 gets the calcium to the bones and the teeth where they belong, not the soft tissues and the arteries where they don't belong. Okay. So, so what kind of diet do you recommend for martial artists? Like high, like a lot of drinking a lot of milk or? Uh, no, I don't like milk. Uh, I don't like milk at all because milk, we're the only species that consumes milk from another species, the only species that consumes milk as an adult. I'm not a big milk. A lot of people have milk allergies too and food sensitivities. Even though they might not be lactose intolerant, they might have a sensitivity. And I tell people, uh, you know, to get off gluten, get off of lactose, the two things and see how you feel. So a lot of people, you know, they shouldn't be eating grains. Uh, you know, the whole thing with the food pyramid, eat all these grains. Now, I think we should be more of a, ketogenic diet, like I said, eating, um, you know, things like salmon is great, a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, salads to eat, uh, avocados are fantastic. Uh, and it's amazing though, when you go on a good diet, so many people are suffering from depression and pre-diabetes. Uh, you know, there's, we spend more money per capita than anybody else in the world on uh, healthcare and we, Keep on going down. I think we're around 34th now in life expectancy in the United States. It's, wow. it's really horrible. You know, I always say that it's not the pill for the ill. And people are taking so many drugs because that's how we're indoctrinated ever since we're kids. The United States and New Zealand are the only two countries in the world that can, that can advertise prescription drugs to the consumer. And, oh, wow. and uh, you know, the cure is not in your medicine cabinet. The cure is on your dinner plate. That's where the cure is. And there was a movie called Forks Over Knives all about that. And the idea is, you know, what you eat, not what you cut with the surgeon. When I first heard Forks Over Knives, it's like, what's that? You know, how you cut your meat, fork over a knife? Yeah, it's yeah. So cover. it's saying like you are what you eat, right? Did you see, ever see Super Size Me, that movie? No, no, no. Oh, that was great. This guy was, he ate McDonald's for like so many weeks and it ended up, he gained so much weight, he even ended up with, a poor guy ended up with erectile dysfunction from eating McDonald's. Isn't that great advertisement? Oh, was that like a couple years ago or something? Yes. 
Yes, but then yeah, he. Yeah, I think my coworkers were telling me about. Oh, it, it was it was crazy, it, it was crazy. But you know, you are what you eat. So you know, another friend of mine is a doctor, uh, another chiropractor told me, you know, everything that we uh, do, everything we put in our bodies, either makes us live longer or not so long. So you know, it's a crapshoot. I mean, life is a giant game of Russian roulette. Everything we do or don't do puts bullets into or out of that cha those chambers. Yep. Because, you know, it could be a one out of a thousand chance of something, and you could get that. It could be 999 out of a thousand or something else, and you won't get it. But playing the odds is the best thing to do. But, you know, in general, you know, we should stay away from head trauma. And now they're saying even cognitive things, if you have a concussion, to, you know, don't even do like math, for example. You have to let your brain... You know, chill out too. Besides your body. Oh, you mean like like late at night, like like your brain. Oh no! In other words, if you get you have a concussion, then for a number of days afterwards, you shouldn't do anything that requires higher, you know, cerebral mental focus or processes. Do like you know just normal conversation, not anything oh, okay. mentally, besides physically. But um, like I was saying, I'm lucky I've got that gene for injury repair. So I think that's what's saying me because I, I, I'm telling you, I probably had minimum of five concussions in my life. Minimum. Is that, probably a lot more than that. Is that from the martial arts? Oh, thing? yeah. Diving into a swim pool in the shallow end and all kinds of things. Wrestling uh, because I grappled and I developed a whole like, you know, street martial arts before MMA was even around before the, and I recorded the first uh, friend of mine was over, actually Bob Hammond, who is a patient patient of mine, also a martial arts student, who got into the U.S. Marshals, Deputy Marshal in Newark, 500 applicants. He got the job coincidence, and he got me working with the Marshals, and Mike DePasquale got in, and, and Tom Petiri, and all these other guys. So we all went down to Fort Dix in 1992, I think it was, and we taught at the FBI Defensive Tactics Training School down okay. there. So I was, I was down there with Mike's dad, we were room down there. I'm laying there in bed thinking to myself, yeah, tomorrow I'm teaching you guys. These guys are FBI defensive tactics instructors. Maybe they're better than me. And I remember the art of war by Sun Tzu and you know, the threat of the attack is worse than attack itself because when you see attack coming, you know what you're dealing with. But it's like Alfred Hitchcock. You can conjure something off screen a lot worse than you can show somebody. The boogeyman in the back of your head is the worst, worse than the one you can see on a movie. Oh, wow. So then I said, I can't do anything about it now. I'm going to sleep. And it was like I was teaching green belts the next day. But these guys are very proficient with firearms. But, you know, but I'm lucky because these guys I work with, you know, some of the top martial artists on the planet. Yeah. So we did our best to teach them as much as we could. But I felt a little better because they weren't better than me. But I felt bad because they weren't better than me because, you know, I figured that you have the best people out there teaching. But, uh, Unfortunately, in general law enforcement, we're trying to change that. And Tom goes around teaching, you know, all the time police. But in general, they don't have the level of skills that they should. Because if they did, then there'd be a lot less situations like Eric Garner where he got choked out. And oh, yeah, yeah. that was horrible. I went crazy when I saw that video. Because you should never put your hands on anybody like that. You know, with a psychology confrontation, if I was a policeman in that situation, I'd say, you know, it's illegal to sell single cigarettes. So you know what we're going to do? Do me a favor. Let's hang out here. I'll flash my badge. Anybody tries to sell cigarettes, they're not buy any more from you. But you don't want to leave? Let's hang out. I'm supposed to, you know, be leaving my shift, but I need overtime. You know, I get paid a lot of money for overtime. So let's hang out and give me some overtime. And he would have just taken off. Yeah, but yeah. I have to look at a situation and try to figure out, how to deal with it. Now, this is not only for police, but for physical confrontation, because I do anti-bullying programs. Oh, okay. And the first and, thing you have to know about- uh, With schools? With uh, well, all kinds, of, I've been teaching anti-bullying for over a quarter century. But the first thing we have to realize is that bullying is hardwired, hardwired in our DNA. We're meant to bully. Now, why am I saying that? Because with dogs, with horses, all species, they bully. 
because it effectively removes other members of the species from the gene pool so they can't reproduce. So they take the defective individuals and remove them by bullying them. But we're living in a society now with rules and regulations. We can't tell people who can reproduce and who can't. Yeah. Okay? So we should be above that. But we have to realize that it's within us, hardwired. So we have to go over that. You know, in the old days, you're walking by the cave. You saw some woman that you liked. You hit the guy over the head. You killed him and you took her. He had a piece of meat. You punched him and you took it. But we have rules today. Somebody's yeah. you know, eating a sandwich, you can't hit him over the head and take it. Exactly. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, bullying, what I say with the bullies is that, uh, you know, they're really low self-esteem. You can make yourself feel better one of two ways, by accomplishing something or making other people feel worse than you. And the bullies try to drag other people down. So my advice to kids is that first learn some martial arts so you know how to deal with it, but, but never let a bully with an arm's length always, you know, turn to the side, a little bend to the knees, have your hands locked like you're talking like you're Italian. I got enough Italian DNA, I can say that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're in a modified fighting stance. But I got a little crazy. Right? Do you ever see the original uh, movie Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was got thrown in the movie theater because I was yelling at the screen back then. Well, you're an idiot. Because the both of them are standing there with their knees locked, talking to each other, both within the kill zone. You know, both him and the bad guy that used to break pool sticks over people, pool cues. Yeah. But whoever they got for their advice on that wasn't very good, whoever's out there. And I tell you to your face if I knew who you were, but, you know, anybody to allow – that situation when somebody's supposed to be the guru of bouncing, you know, yeah. don't do that in a real situation. And, you know, when you back up, another thing is if somebody moves into your personal space, you never back straight up. You spiral out because yeah. you increase your distance, but by spiraling, because if you back up, you show you're submissive. You don't want to stay where you are because then they can get within your kill zone, which is arm's length. So you want to spiral out. And then you say, whoa, whoa, stay there. You know, you're getting a little too close to me. You get too close to me, I start to get nervous because I'm going to think you could try to do harm to me. Are uh, you going to try to do harm to me? Yeah. Is that your intention? Then you just call them out on it. And a lot of people don't like to be talked to like that because when you have confidence, the bully doesn't like that. They yeah. don't like people with confidence. They want somebody to cower. And, you know, we could do a whole interview on bullying, but uh, – I know we're probably running out of time. How many more minutes do we have left? Uh, we got like a minute or two. A minute or what, two. What kind of stuff do you recommend for recovery? Okay, for recovery. Well, actually, tourmaline, our products work very well for recovery because my theory works on mitochondrial dysfunction. But as far as uh, recovery, as far as food goes, uh, you know, you need protein for recovery. And a lot of times it's good to work out in an empty stomach because when you work on an empty stomach, you're burning fat and you're making your body go to more, because we're either carb burners or fat burners. You want to be a oh, fat burner. Yeah, yeah. Primitive humans were fat burners. You know yeah, if you're a carb burner, you miss a meal, you get all shaky, you're a carb burner. You know you're a fat burner, you miss a meal, you just get hungry. Yeah. You're shaky. But yeah. we want to convert to being, and I'm a big fan of intermittent fasting, which we could do a whole show on intermittent fasting. It, yeah, you know, that's like the new trend now, intermittent fasting. Right. You know, a lot of intermittent fasting, like eating that. within an eight-hour window a day, and also try not to eat within three hours of going to bed at night, and also uh, high-intensity interval training. I really advocate that, which really builds HGH naturally. It's a bunch of ways of building HGH, which is human growth hormone. Intermittent fasting, and then you have uh, vibration platform training, and also high-intensity interval training are all very good for that. And also there's another product which I use called Somaderm, which is if anybody uh, wants information on that, they can contact me. That's a uh, homeopathic HGH with no side effects. It's 30 cycles of homeopathic dilution. I've been doing that for over a year. I look about five years younger than I did a year ago. I got rid of my gray hair till my gray hair disappeared. And everybody was asking me if I was dying my hair, my TV show. Is that like an anti-aging? 
It's anti-aging too, yes. Okay. It's, um, but that's, like I said, a story for another day. But uh, I've really been investigating because I want to be the first person to live to be 200. That's oh, my goal. Wow. That's my goal. People laugh. Now, here's the thing, though. You want to be like, be like, like, like some people like, are like they always want to live long, but you want okay. to have the okay. quality of okay. life, right? Now, who wants to be drawn out of the side of the mouth, eating yeah, exactly. food, and in diapers? You might be alive, but you're not living. Yeah, exactly. I would trade, people would trade 10 years of pain and suffering for one year of health and vitality, but there's no store to go to for that deal. So what you have to do is you have to maintain your health when you have it or obtain it again before it's irreversibly lost. Yeah. I do a whole other thing called science-based nutrition where we do hair, urine, and blood, and we see what's off. And we can help just about any condition without drugs. That's great. Because every drug is a potential side effect. Exactly. And uh, now, people wanted to get in touch with you. Right. How would they get in touch with you? Because we, we are running out of time. Okay, yeah, we can call my office, which is in Ramsey, New Jersey. It's 201 447 3800 is the phone number. Or my okay. website is dr evangel. That's d r e v a n g e l dot com. DrEvangel.com. Just remember the evil angel, E V for evil, but I'm not evil. And then angel. <laughs> There's one of my martial arts students who's always called me the evil angel. But we all have our good side and our not so good side. As the Native American said, depends which wolf you feed. You know, I'm very philosophical too. I'm also an ordained minister, too. <laughs> and That's a couple great. of the, a couple of the uh, Couples that married are divorced, but you know, that's life. Exactly. You know. Well, Michael, it was great having you on Michael, the show. Great to be here. And uh, we'll, I'll get back and talk to you about that Ruku channel. And everybody, uh, don't forget, he has a show coming out on Ruku. Um, and he's in, uh, what's the town? Uh, uh, Ramsey? Roku. R O K U. Roku. Yeah. What town is your office in again? Uh, Ramsey, New Jersey. In Ramsey, New Jersey. Yes, right here in Bergen County. Yeah. Right near, not far from me, actually. Well, where are you located? Uh, I'm over by like Westwood and Paramus. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're like neighbors. Yeah, I used to live in Rivervale. I, yeah. Yeah. Not far at all. Yep. Okay, we'll have to get together sometime. Maybe have lunch. Exactly, exactly. We'll, we'll uh, talk shop. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Mark, it's great talking to you. All right, man. Thanks for being on the show. Okay, live long and prosper. <laughs> you too. Okay. <laughs> the 200. <laughs> All right, buddy. Take care. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.